The creative genesis of the film actually came from what is a story that can be told that's both interior mentally, but also has a grander scale. Essentially one man alone in a room, but trying to make this grander story about a man on pretty much the greatest adventure that mankind could have at this point. Approaching the Unknown is an independent sci-fi film about one man on a one-way mission alone to the planet Mars. I wanted to have a tactile and a visceral experience of space. I didn't want to use computer graphics because really it is about the character's sensory imagination of what's out there. So I wanted to have models and space itself have texture and weight and depth that you can't get with CGI. Not many people work in practical models anymore, so we were looking for you know, who some of the experts of this in the world are, and obviously finding Doug Trumbull, who was the special effects supervisor on 2001 and Close Encounters in the Third Kind, Blade Runner, and all the way up to Terrence Malick's Tree of Life. Those are incredibly signature films for a reason, is partially because they were doing things that like no one else was doing. Now that I look back on these movies, I say, hey, they actually still look pretty good. They've aged gracefully. We tracked him down and you know he was just kind of amazing because he's you know somewhat left the Hollywood world to create his own studio in the Berkshires. These young filmmakers came to me with their vision, cold called me because they wanted to make a low-budget sci-fi movie. I said, okay, sci-fi movie, that's good. Uh, you're young, that's good. And so I thought, well, one of the things about it that I like is, is being able to train young filmmakers in this art form. We were able to shoot at his studio where there's model making shops and a green screen room and the tanks for the underwater uh, materials. And it was just a wonderful place to, to play and to experiment and figure this stuff out on our own, but with the guidance of pretty much the godfather of you know, special effects. Everything we've been doing out here, we've been taking like the newest of the new stuff and combining it with some of the like most classic stuff that's almost completely abandoned at this point and, and inventing something new. You get something that doesn't look like anything that's ever been made before. It's relatively easy, of course, to make a model of a spaceship, but to make one that can work on camera in extreme close-up and feel realistic is a very different set of skills. All the science and all the, the ways things work, we're, we tried hard to research those things and make sure that they would comport with scientific scrutiny. There are a lot of people on this thing that are learning stuff, you know, myself including. It's like a collective thing. It's a bunch of people figuring this stuff out together. And what it ends up being is kind of always better than what anybody thought it would be. For the emptiness of space, we created these giant tanks that we'd fill with glycerin and corn syrup and salt water, and then be swirling in inks and dyes and glitter and dust and all these things so that space itself was viscous and present. The director wanted the film to become progressively abstracted and kind of mysterious and almost as though the astronaut is going mad. And so they've been using this tank a lot and using other tanks and sheets of glass and all kinds of things. Like a lot of times, like we found really cool effects while trying to figure out how to control other effects. Something weird happens, you go like, well, that's really cool. And then you kind of follow that and go like, okay, well, what can that be used for? Can that be used in a separate part of the film? It's become a staple of my philosophy about the fact that if you allow some unexpected phenomena to happen while the camera is running, you'll get something that no computer graphics algorithm code writer could make because the unexpected will happen. And surprisingly enough, you get a lot of really great stuff really fast. You know, if you punctuate an independent film that's very character-based with these scenes of spectacle, it really can elevate the emotions of the story to another level and it can open up a bunch of kinds of stories that you can tell. The character goes from being a scientist who thinks he knows everything that's going to happen to being a poet who realizes that he can only really learn the value of an experience by doing it, by trying something and just seeing what happens. 
the core message is really just to go out and try to do something beautiful for yourself. <laughs>